In the limestone valleys of southern Europe, under layers of sediment and ice, lie the bones of a people who were once our closest kin. For over 150 years, they have been cast in the shadow of our own story, sometimes as brutish hunters, sometimes as tragic relics. But now, ancient DNA has begun to speak, and what it's revealing may change everything we thought we knew about where Neanderthals truly came from. For decades, the origin of Neanderthals has been a puzzle. Their remains are scattered from the caves of Spain to the plains of Siberia, dating back hundreds of thousands of years. Yet their genetic signature, the blueprint in their cells, hints at a journey even older, stretching back into a time before Europe had ever seen their kind. A new study, led by an international team of geneticists and paleoanthropologists, has analyzed DNA from Neanderthal fossils found in multiple locations, from the famous Vindija cave in Croatia to the remote Altai mountains of southern Siberia. The results connect the dots between climate shifts, migrations, and encounters with other ancient humans. Neanderthals were no isolated offshoot. Around 600,000 years ago, they split from a common ancestor they shared with us, likely Homo heidelbergensis, somewhere in Africa or Eurasia. But their exact point of origin? That's where the DNA has been silent, until now. The team examined nuclear and mitochondrial DNA, the latter passed down through mothers, from bones and teeth preserved in permafrost-like conditions. These genetic fragments were compared to hundreds of ancient and modern genomes from across the globe, and they revealed something remarkable. The earliest Neanderthals carried traces of an even older lineage, one that appears to have come from the East, possibly Central or East Asia, before making its way West into Ice Age Europe. One of the most striking finds came from the Altai Neanderthal, a female who lived more than 120,000 years ago. Her DNA showed signs of interbreeding with another mysterious human group, the Denisovans, deep in prehistory. This suggests the Neanderthal story wasn't a straight line from origin to extinction, but a braided river of contacts, exchanges, and migrations. The genetic evidence also shows that not all Neanderthals were the same. Early Western Neanderthals, such as those from Spain's Cima de los Huesos cave, dated to over 430,000 years ago, had different genetic profiles from their Eastern cousins. This means multiple waves of Neanderthals may have moved into Europe, replacing, mixing, and sometimes coexisting with each other. But if their ancestors came from further east, what drove them there in the first place? Climate may have been a key player. Ice Age Europe was a land of brutal winters and shifting landscapes. Glacial cycles pushed populations south into refuges, then pulled them north again during warmer interglacials. Those movements may have connected Neanderthals with distant populations, including the ancestors of modern humans, far earlier than we thought. The DNA also uncovered something else, a small but significant amount of genes from an even more ancient hominin, possibly Homo erectus, suggesting deep roots in Asia before their expansion west. This unexpected link hints that the true birthplace of Neanderthals may not have been a single region at all, but a vast interconnected range stretching thousands of miles. What's becoming clear is that Neanderthals were far from the slow-moving, isolated survivors we once imagined. They were travelers, innovators, and, in their own way, survivors of epic journeys. And the next clue in their origin story comes from a place that has challenged archaeologists for decades. That place is the Mesmeskaya Cave in the Caucasus Mountains, a rugged corridor between Europe and Asia. Here, archaeologists uncovered the remains of a Neanderthal child, her bones still carrying whispers of her short life, more than 40,000 years ago. Her DNA told a different tale. From the Neanderthals of Western Europe, she carried genetic links to populations much further east, echoing the ancestry seen in the Altai Neanderthal. This reinforced the idea that the Caucasus acted not as a border, but as a bridge, one that connected Ice Age Europe to the vastness of Asia. The timeline painted by these genomes is staggering. Sometime between 100,000 and 60,000 years ago, Neanderthals expanded and re-expanded into different regions multiple times, 
Each movement left subtle changes in their DNA, like footnotes in a book that no one thought we'd ever read, and each movement may have brought them into contact with other human groups, including our own ancestors. This matters because the story of Neanderthals is also the story of us. Every non-African person alive today carries, on average, about 1-2% to 2 Neanderthal DNA. That inheritance is the product of interbreeding events, some in the Middle East, others perhaps further east. When modern humans began expanding out of Africa, roughly 60,000 years ago. But the new genetic evidence pushes some of these encounters far deeper into the past. In fact, certain Neanderthal lineages appear to have received genes from early modern human relatives over 200,000 years ago, long before our species' great migration. That suggests waves of contact, separation, and reconnection spanning hundreds of millennia. So why did Neanderthals vanish? around 40,000 years ago, if they were so adaptable. DNA offers a partial answer. By the end of their existence, Neanderthal populations had become small and isolated. This led to inbreeding, which reduced genetic diversity and may have made them more vulnerable to disease and environmental stress. At the same time, modern humans, armed with larger social networks, broader trade systems, and perhaps more flexible technologies, began spreading rapidly into their territories. Yet, the genetic record makes one thing clear. Neanderthals didn't simply lose. They left a legacy woven into our own biology, genes that still influence how our immune systems work, how we process fat, even how our skin responds to sunlight. In a sense, they never fully disappeared. As ancient DNA technology advances, Researchers are now searching for Neanderthal genetic traces in unexpected places, in cave sediments without visible bones, in ancient tools that may carry microscopic blood residues, even in the dental calculus of fossilized teeth. Each new find sharpens the picture of a species whose origins were far more dynamic than the static museum dioramas suggest. The real origin of Neanderthals is not a single point on a map. It's a network of journeys, exchanges, and adaptations spanning continents. It's the story of a people shaped by shifting ice, mingling with other humans, and carrying memories of places thousands of miles apart. And as the evidence grows, one truth becomes harder to ignore. To understand them is to understand ourselves. Because in every strand of our DNA, there are echoes of their struggles, their triumphs, and their endurance. They walked through landscapes that would break most of us, hunted in cold so deep it could kill within minutes, and still, they adapted. The wind that cut across their shelters, the firelight that flickered on stone walls, the shared meals, the songs or stories we'll never hear, all left their imprint on who we are today. And when we trace their story, we're not just uncovering the past, we're finding the missing chapters of our own.